न्यूज फर्स्ट फेस टू फेस विद जयमाल रत्नायकर Hello there and a very good evening. Welcome to another episode of Face to Face coming to you live and direct from our news first studios here in Colombo. Today is the 25th of March 2024. As always, I'm Jaimal Ratnayaka for the News First team. And tonight, my guest on the show is Professor Anil Jayanta, National Executive Committee member of the National People's Power, here to talk about everything from economics to politics and everything in between. Good evening, Professor, and welcome back on the show. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you very much. It's my great pleasure to be with you. Certainly. And uh, to get the ball rolling tonight, Professor, your leader, Anur Kumar Adisanayaka, seems to be travelling the world quite often these days. And uh, you are coming on this program at a time where Anur Kumar Adisanayaka is in Canada, voyaging far towards the Western world, engaging with uh, Sri Lankan communities there. and this prompts the question something that i have personally been thinking about is there are so many professionals and so many sri lankans residing overseas and they make up the diaspora especially when it comes to countries like canada and those individuals are very capable of supporting sri lanka if they believe that the administration in sri lanka are uh, engaged in a concerted effort to support sri lanka's recovery process what sort of ambition or vision does the npp have to engage with the diaspora in other nations and gaining their support and their confidence in sri lanka's road to recovery uh, thank you jaimal uh, it's very um, straightforward and very simple because we as uh, npp mm. is uh, not going to form another government right actually we are going to form a government and trying to rule the country with everyone together mm. we we do not request just vote us and we will rule no so we ask them to join hands with us mm. and we will rule the country together in that case we cannot uh, uh, neglect Uh, any strata or single strata of this country starting from maybe a grassroots level right. uh, the worker mm. farmer or at any other level the professionals no matter whether they live in sri lanka or overseas ne- overseas so in the past to great extent we know that like when forming governments these expatriates really contributed in different ways they had certain hopes mm. we believe like mm. irrespective of our political ideologies and all those things they wanted a country or mm. a society in which we can live in harmony and peace but it did not happen now really if we want to form such a society right. we need their support in mm. numerous ways mm. so this is the uh, the kind of an, uh, efforts um of just uh, bringing them into a common thread because in the past um people join with individual and different objectives right. here it is easy under npp platform the banner we have only one common uh, theme mm. so thread therefore it is easy that, that is just to um enhance and uh, bring about the country with economic prosperity mm. and by respecting the human dignity mm. so that um Uh, as far as the economy is also concerned we need to go for an inclusive economy so where everybody can contribute especially this um, sri lankan diaspora living in canada and everywhere uh, they have um, in addition to their ideas actually they have um, earn uh, a save some money as well like enough uh, money mm. that could be converted in investments right. in sri lanka due to the prevailing situation and uncertainty and these um, issues mm. even the available savings are not converted into investment right. so our effort one of the our efforts among the other things as i just told you mm. uh, to bring their savings into uh, sri lankan investment to boost the economy right so going beyond the diaspora talking about bilateral relations yeah. when it comes to the western world um we know historically mm. the jvp which is one of the primary parties within the npp has been somewhat resistant of uh, engaging with western nations but now we see that ideology or that approach changing with the npp and is it something that is being done just to appease the people to show that 
you are engaging with the international community or is there a genuine interest in forging relationships with other nations so that if and when you do come to power, you will have the fullest support of those nations to take the country forward? Mm. So, in fact, I just want to make a kind of correction. In mm. fact, JVP or NPP did not have, even in the past, mm. um, such policies that we did not have any um, antagonizing mm. policies with other countries. Right. So, though the, I mean, our enemies mm. have uh, institutionalized some kind of ideologies that we are against countries. Right. You know, we are always, mm. we were, and I, as of now, against the policies right. which are really detrimental to the mankind and human. So, no matter whether it is America, India, Mm. even China no matter so we maintain this thing right. so as far as our foreign policy is also concerned so mm. we would like to go for a non-aligned policy because mm. now world has uh, different uh, the camps mm. in terms of political ideologies they have international political the rules but as far as Sri Lanka is concerned mm. being a small country we do not have such a role so that we better go for the non-aligned policy mm. so in developing our economy and maintaining uh, diplomatic relations and all those things and we need to have good relations so bilateral agree relations and good understanding we had that objective from the very beginning but since we were not up to a level mm. where we are going to uh, bargain for the power right. so even we also did not put that much effort of okay. just building these things so right. now we are at that particular juncture mm. so we are gaining momentum gaining yeah of mm. course the momentum and that is reflected even general the general public uh, sentiment is also there right. so that could be one of the reasons why again the diplomatic diplomats are also mm. just inviting us just maintaining good um, uh, conversation with mm. us and apart from the other things so i mean our leaders mm. the foreign visits are uh, such that one part of just um, uh, bringing everything together to mm. uh, form a very uh, strong um, uh, uh, position right. to gain the power mm. and to extend in real terms mm. to extend these relationships in such a manner mm. that there are uh, different um, avenues ways uh, through which we can develop our economy right. uh, especially you remember we went to India as well mm. so lots of opportunities are there to develop Sri Lankan economy through a very robust uh, agreements right. even uh, the bilateral agreements mm. where no party is trying to gain uh, undue advantages mm. so to, to serve the self-interest mm. so lots of potential are there mm. unlike in the past now the world is such that where you can create values mm. through corporations right. need not to go for fierce competition so mm. that was in the past so we have understood this mm. so what how the world is changing we are ready to gather this momentum mm. Um, and uh, take, think it of, yeah, take it forward. Right. So let's bring the conversation back to Sri Lanka here at home. Yeah. If uh, a neutral observer comes to Sri Lanka who is unaware of uh, what is what mm. has taken place historically mm. and observes the surface level and the status quo, if I put it that way, yeah. we can see that uh, the Department of Census and Statistics saying that Sri Lanka experienced 4.5% growth in the fourth quarter of 2023 we can also see tourists boom tourism booming swathes of tourists coming into sri lanka we can see the imf has uh, reached a staff level agreements to release the release the second tranche of the extended fund facility so mm. one might say that the current administration is taking sri lanka on the right path what is your opinion on that mm, yeah you're right jamal like so it appears to mm. be uh, that like we are recovering. But if you do a careful analysis right. based on facts and information, uh, you see like uh, especially after 1970s mm. even, throughout our history, so now no matter whether we have different ideologies or any other things, everyone accepts the fact that country is in real abyss now. Okay. It is a fact. Yes. But during this particular period mm. so we have taken too much i mean we, we have obtained uh, loans mm. and now that the, the the debt level is also unsustainable mm. so amidst these things so where the country is heading because we need to see a trend of a country not by looking at a particular short time period right you need to take a longer time period mm. if you take the 40 years so four decades so country is really heading towards a crash but if you take maybe one day one week one quarter you if you want you can manipulate data so when crooks are in power right. corrupt people are in power mm. of course in addition to these things mm. they use numbers right. to manipulate what mm. we call window dressing practices I cooking see. numbers okay. cooking book books okay. so i'll just show you mm. uh, it is good that you raise mm. 
in this particular quarter like yes mm -hmm. uh, year on year basis quarter the positive growth of 4.5 percent right. but in fact for the entire year what matters is the year at the end okay so negative 2.3 Right. If the country is, no matter whether it is negative mm. form or positive or stable, when a country is growing, it should be stable. Mm. Such high volatility is so dangerous. Right. If you see, if you just can the camera can focus this. Yes. You can see how this quarterly uh, the growth mm. have changed. This is the game of manipulating numbers. Mm -hmm. So if you could the, explain it a bit to others yeah, who yeah, are not that able is right. to. So in the first quarter, even in the first quarter when this number came. We had a press, co press conference mm. briefing. I explained this matter. Right. The government is trying to manipulate data. I see. In the very first quarter, they reported negative 10.7 growth. Negative. Right. Then no one is worried. Okay, now we are in a crisis. Mm. Okay, negative growth. It is common to common. witness okay. a negative so, uh, growth. Then in the second quarter, it was reduced to negative 3%. Right. In the third quarter, gradually showed 1.6%, then 4.5%. When we average, so 2.3 minus is the average result of these three. So you can simply add these numbers and divide it by four, mm. you get this number. Right. So this is manipulation. Anyway, if anyone believes or anyone argues that no, we are in a recovery, because even sometimes so called well established institution, even including IMF, right. IMF also has stated this fact. Mm. Okay, the government is recovering, it right. is not really recovering. Mm. You better wait for another quarter. Mm. If this is true, if you are in a growth momentum, so what is the answer? The next quarter should be more than 4.5. We'll see. So, definitely, it's more likely government would report next quarter negative growth right. or. Uh, next, I mean, the, the, the 2024, For next quarter, quarter. Is like not the third quarter yes. now, uh, just before the election, mm. uh, maybe that quarter would be positive. Right. I'm referring to the first quarter of 2024. Four. That data is not available. available For yeah. sure, mm. first quarter of 2024 would be a very negative growth, maybe 10, 15 percent. Mm. It is more likely. That is why being intelligent people in Sri Lanka, like we have a high literacy rate. Right. We should not be really driven away by so-called numbers mm. and emotions. Do a very careful analysis. This is a very good uh, the indication and information mm. that how the government is manipulating numbers. Right. So uh, speaking on the topic of manipulating numbers, I want to go into the integrity of things because you have come geared up to discuss this matter <laughs> at length. So if we take uh, growth of industries and services, yeah. uh, particularly if we go into the nitty-gritty of things, how has the economy performed and what sort of information is available to the general public through mm. official sources? Yeah, um, yeah subject to like, certain limitations, constraints are there about the numbers as well as, as yes, I just told you, certainly. some limitations are there. However, to some extent, we need to take these official statistics. Right. So then that is why it is said 2.3%. Mm. Any economy in this world basically uh, broke into three major components, mm. agriculture, industries and services. Services. So, yes. if the economy is stable, okay. not highly uh, the vulnerable, mm. then the growth should be reflected in all the areas. Okay. But in, if you take Sri Lanka's situation now, Central Bank has published uh, right. the recent report that is... Um, when was this published? Uh, maybe a week ago. Right. National accounts uh, estimate, that is 2023 statistics. These are the things, so they say that is estimates some minor changes would come mm -hmm. would be included in if the, you could, uh, yeah, uh, would be included in the next annual report right if you um, see agriculture sector uh, industries and services mm. you can see carefully except the rice mm. the paddy cultivation in agriculture agriculture sector all the other cultivations of the crops have reported a significant negative growth so this is where how the economy is contracting mm. and creating lots of pro problems. You lose your jobs and you don't have adequate income whereby how come people would uh, uh, go for the demand, their disposable income is very less. Yes. Yeah, in turn, mm. as a spillover impact, so that would affect to industries as well, then industries also would, would be closed down or uh, have to and that contract. Is, that is reflected, reflected on that just, uh, yeah, reflected. So if you just well. say all the other crops have shown a negative growth. Mm. By the same way, if you look at the industries, so when we take the aggregate amount, mm. then uh, agriculture has reported a positive, positive six point something. Right. But if you go to the deep analysis, mm. so like if the government wants, to be, you can play with that number. Okay, mm. agriculture has improved. Mm. It's not really an improvement. All the other sectors have gone down. down. But when we go to the industries, because industries is a key driver of economic development, but all the sectors, if you go to mining, construction, water-related, manufacturing, electricity, 
storage, everything negative growth. So this is a key. So if this your industrialization, mm. industry sector does not come up, mm. improve, actually other sectors also would be fair, like a uh, uh, gradual like, uh, uh, influence. Right. To great extent, uh, service sector. Okay. The service sector, apart from the financial services, mm. other services, logistic services, insurance, uh, transportation, and mm. all those things should support. Right. And they go in hand parallel, in hand. hand in hand. Mm. But you can see the analysis in detail, service sector also, uh, except... Um, Accommodation, that is the hotel in the sector, Tourism. it is pretty obvious nowadays right. because when the tourist arrival increases, the this income goes up. Goes up. Mm. And insurance also, when the risk is there, mm. lots of insurance um, uh, policies may be increased. All the other sectors, uh, major sectors, mm. have reported negative growth. Right. So therefore, it's a very clear indication that where our economy is really heading towards. Mm. So from numbers, they can manipulate and show, but in real situation, the general people, especially the downtrodden people and vulnerable people, uh, vulnerable people will, would face these mm. issues and the hardship of their lives in the future. Right. And uh, wh what would be the answer for the government? Mm. Then government would come out with some kind of like um, direct cash transfers mm. or giving some subsidies right. and keeping them in the poor status all the time right. and giving a kind of subsidy and just uh, like uh, just to, can, just yeah, to appease make, the people yeah, be, uh, making them a little bit um, comfortable satisfied satisfied they might think that oh my goodness because because of that we are surviving right. it is not so you have to ask question mm. especially this particular country having all these resources and having very good uh, human resource capacity and without having a good uh, political direction and ideology all the time you are suffering your life so are we there to live like this mm. what is the life you are having so it, it's not really um, I mean in no means mm. it could be justified. Right. You have to first understand uh, this uh, the, 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 the I mean, critical situation of right. This so, Professor, policies. you you gave us you gave uh, me and our viewers the grueling numbers yeah. of uh, where it comes to a very very integrated breakdown of uh, our agriculture industries and services. Mm. But what is the NPP's plan, Professor, to uplift all these sectors? It doesn't seem like an overnight task, mm, mm, and mm. it doesn't seem like something that can be done if you win an election tomorrow you can take Sri Lanka back to prosperity the next day mm. so where does the solution the panacea where does it lie and what is the NPP's structure and plan mm. to address this yeah actually so you just uh, turned to a very good uh, the point like this is the base mm. no matter whether it is NPP or any other government mm. um, uh, that has a genuine interest, uh, uh, interest of really uh, recovering the economy and taking the economy from this particular abyss out, we need to go for a production economy. That means we need to expand uh, the the production that is the both goods and services. It is something what we call unlocking the potential. So how best we could do this? Mm. So of course uh, the government has to take into account our potential. Yes. So they are constrained mm. to great extent by the availability of the resources. Right. Of course we have some resources mm. and being an island so not only the land yes. and the mineral resources likewise so we our production mm. as of now does not take place in such a manner based on such a direction right we need to have a planning mm. so that is the thing so even the the optimal utilization of land mm. so th th that is number one mm. and if we do that and create a conducive environment uh, for the investment to be turned into sorry savings to be turned into investment yes and invite uh, private sector investors mm to come and do, mm. uh, engage in economic activities on a fair manner. So that is what we call level playing field, field creating. Yes. We have to, because we are talking about a democratic environment. So that is the base. Mm. But as you said, Jaimal, it takes time. It doesn't happen over time. Right. So therefore, even the, when NPP comes to uh, the power, we implement these programs and the based on these policies, mm. we would drive our economy for sure. Right. In the meantime, we have... Uh, two critical issues okay. that we can't um, simply neglect. Yes. So the current issue mm. that the government does not have one hand adequate revenue to run the, 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 the take care of, of the, the basic things mm. like uh, public services, utilities and mm. all those things. As a government, government has to um, have certain amount of public finance. Right. That is not adequate. Mm. That is as of now, now, now uh, less than 10% of GDP. Right. We have to increase at least within a couple of years time to 15% and targeting 20%. I see. We can do that mm. even with high tax rates. Our tax base is shrinking mm. because there are so many leakages 
and uh, lots of tax frauds yes. and opportunities are there for tax evasion mm. and tax avoidances. Yes. So we have a plan of just um, little curbing all these things okay. and um, uh, uh, to increase the tax revenue and not at these rates. Under our government, of course, mm. these tax rates would be revised, mm. not immediately, right. with a careful analysis. To do that, uh, we would use a technology to great extent. Right. So present premise system and whether in, uh, application is needed, mm. we will do that. And that would be done. And again, the tax administration also, okay. they are in the IRD. Yes. Some areas are there, we have to, like once the technology is brought in, mm. so this manual operation can be done there away with. There have to be creases, yeah, there have to be creases that you need to iron out. Exactly. Mm. If you do these things, of course, we can increase our government revenue. Mm. So within the region, mm. for example, I mean, need not to compare with the world, mm. uh, even uh, IMF uh, fiscal uh, monitor report, right has provided information that in the Asian region, the tax revenue of a government uh, is more than t uh, roughly around 25% of GDP. I see. But their tax rates, individual tax rates mm. and wet rates are concerned, they are very low. Mm. For example, when it comes to essential stuff, okay. if you uh, impose high tax rate, mm. it is really uh, um, dangerous mm. and um, that would really create lots of unnecessary problems in the economy. So will the, the, the sorry, continue. Yeah, please. So what I just wanted to tell you, so in that way, mm. we have to uh, uh, revive mm. and uh, our streamline our uh, revenue collection system, mm. whereby we can consolidate uh, public uh, the revenue with the expenses. Mm. Uh, and again, there are lots of inefficiencies and issues. Uh, which are also driven by corruption and mm. uh, politicization as well. Right. For sure, I, uh, NPP can reduce all those mm. things, thereby we can manage this uh, without having any problems. Mm. And the other issue is the external sector. Yes. External sector is a very uh, the critical mm. for the development, especially yes. in dealing or engaging in uh, uh, present day's uh, economic activities, mm. because the world trade yes. has been uh, gradually increasing. Mm. Now, as a number, mm. it is roughly around 40% of the total uh, GDP, GDP of the world GDP. Mm. But uh, where, where is our position? Mm. It's a very trivial and minimal amount. We need to take a sizable amount from yes. this world trade. Yes. So, for that, what is our plan? Mm. Of course, we need to diversify exports. Mm. We have a separate plan for mm. this thing. To some extent, tourism also can be brought up to a level because uh, but there are limitations. Yes. We can't go for, I mean, because there is a, a carrying capacity within which we can manage. And to develop Sri Lanka, we can bring our foreign remittances as well from our expatriates. So these are the key pillars already we have focused to address immediately. Mm. But in the long run, economic development plan, of course, we have thought of how best FDI, foreign direct Find investment, it. Uh, should be mm. uh, improved and you know when we talk about foreign direct investment it can happen that way or this way some investors also may come by seeing opportunistic uh, uh, situations yes. and just to earn quick buck mm. but we are ready to go for low long term mm. uh, investment where win-win situation they also earn something we also get something finally benefits would be shared it's so, all right so you brought out a very important point there because yeah. uh, although sri lanka has been attracting foreign direct investments mm. all this time most of those agreements have been fly by night agreements where either the party or the investor mm. Mm. has a very tainted track record yeah. or there is no transparency to the people and the masses in terms of what are the regulations or conditions of the agreement and mm. the investment so where will the NPP differentiate itself in terms of showing transparency to the masses, mm. ensuring that Sri Lanka receives a better benefit out of that particular investment. Yeah, of course. Um, so first of all, so deciding what investment should come mm. in, what project should be done, will not be done based on the way and fancies of uh, president or mm. ministers. Right. They would be done based on a robust analysis mm. and based on the available, like the future, okay. uh, the development, all those things. Mm. Accordingly, we decide what are, what the appropriate uh, the industries. It will be done by intellectuals. In, uh, like, mm. Of course. And that meritocracy should mm. prevail there. Mm. Then, when we invite okay. for investment, because being a small country, yes. of course, there are legitimate investors. So nowadays, in addition to pure economic gains, these investors look for other aspects as well. So the 
issues of the climate change, mm. uh, the problems and the green investment. So the future of this particular world is at a juncture where the sustainability is questioned and it's going to be compromised. So if we can open the doors for investors, please come and go ahead and continue with green investment mm. and sustainable investment. Plenty of opportunities are there. Yes. We do that. Mm. But open tendering process and the information. Any citizen be must available. be able to avail because, because we we give one guarantee mm. and assurance that our representatives, our agents, people's agents who take any position mm. in our government, we will respect not to be conflicted with our personal interest with the public interest. So that means we bring the corruption level to zero. So it will be Sri Lanka first. So yeah, that is so if it can give that particular the example from the top mm. automatically that would uh, the spillover would go down to the other areas mm. so this is how we have thought of investment mm. and Jayamal as you just highlighted last four decades mm. we have been able to bring only 20 billion US dollars as for in, foreign direct yes, investment yes. including mm. investment in the stock market right. and other opportunistic investment because the if you just carefully do an analysis of mm. foreign direct investment as of now what mm. we have yes one, once they earn a profit, mm. any excess, what is the next move? If you are a good investor, you would try to expand your investment in Sri Lanka. Yes. But those investors mm. do not have such intention. You carefully check. Mm. Whenever a profit is reported, they want to take it back quickly and remit it back to their own countries in terms of dividends. Because that's uncertain. They, mm. they, 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 they do not want plan. to reinvest it. Yes. Yeah, that is why we say that we can clearly demarcate this thing. Mm. Under NPP government, we create such a level playing a field, platform. platform and democratic environment and win-win situation and go ahead with the long term investment so it's quite possible mm. in addition to foreign investors mm. even sri lankan expatriates also can yes and join so as our come under the diaspora, uh, diaspora mm. already they have um, expressed their the interest interest, interest right. of just investing then what we have to do is to create opportunities right. so therefore i think path is clear mm. and of course um, we we will have to face challenges any challenge can be overcome as long as rulers have genuine objectives and interest of serving the public interest um, uh, without um, uh, tending towards mm. uh, the private interest. Right. So this is what we are, I mean, as NPP. What you envisage. En yes, but there's a very, very in in interesting point you yeah. mentioned in passing, meritocracy, which yeah. is a word that is thrown around but oh. uh, isn't really practiced here in Sri Lanka. So, And we know with the economic crisis, there's a mass exodus of professionals, intellectuals, mm. people who are very knowledgeable in certain fields who left the country. Mm. And the MPP has an opportunity to invite them back to the country, but you need to have a robust plan. So exactly. can you very quickly just map out what that plan is to bring back those great minds to mm. Sri Lanka? Of course, like uh, if I just detail out, um, the first thing is so we can make an open uh, like invitation for anybody to uh, the join hands and mm. take part in these uh, the programs. And um, with these, uh, uh, um, like we, we have established our international uh, institutions like what we call our organizations mm. like uh, in Sri Lanka also we okay. have NPP uh, uh, the, uh, the organization at grassroots level like collectives collectives mm. so likewise we have our organization in other countries as well okay. through which already we have communicated they also have expressed their interest as well right. we have very good um, the, the uh, um, I'd call um, communication right and uh, not only uh, that our initiatives so most of Sri Lankan expatriates, mm. so they have come out with their own initiatives. So they okay. have suggested that right. this area would be possible likewise. That as of now, you would not see all those people who are behind and supporting us in developing our policies. Right. And in future, mm. um, we are for sure, uh, we are not going to uh, give responsibilities mm. or, or give opportunities uh, for any, I mean, even if you just follow meritocracy, yes. those who merely know us mm. or whether they have any connection with mm. the NPP or just because of the political uh, affiliation. affiliation, we are they not going not to be yeah, awarded yeah, no. positions. So for sure, because uh, we give the responsibilities and opportunities and select people based on the, uh, their caliber. Mm. And the capacity and, and the, the qualifications, they qualification have to and the really call meritocracy mm. to serve the nation. Mm. If you can do that, 
of course uh, we can get a very can big all leap, leap in a better sri lanka yeah leap forward certainly leap. my guest tonight was professor anil jayanta national executive committee member of the national people's power break, bringing a very integrated breakdown of uh, and analytical breakdown of uh, sri lanka's economy and what the npp has in store should it come to power one day unfortunately that's all the time we have for face to face tonight do take care and have yourselves a great monday night